The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Tobin at the Southwest Ag Conference, uh, joined now by uh, Dr. Larry Purcell from the University of Arkansas. Larry, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Great. I, I want to talk um, about contest yields in soybeans versus, right. you know, what we can what we can actually achieve on our farm. And you know, you uh, we, in your presentation today, you talked about Randy Dowdy, you know, big numbers, 190, 91, um, and you know what is real there from an economic perspective, and what we can take back to the farm. I want to ask you about Mr. Kip Cullors. Uh, sure. Kip was one of the real leaders in, in the contest, uh, set a record of 161 a few years back. And, and actually, about n his farm's around 90 kilometers, 90 miles away from you, and you had a chance to work with him. Right, right. So, yeah, like, like you said, Kip's farm's about 90 miles from my office. Uh, when Kip came out, before his 161 bushel per acre yield, he had a yield of 139 bushels per acre, and I contacted him through Delta Farm Press, and they put me in touch with Kip. I told Kip that I'd be interested in doing some on-farm research to document his crop, his crop progression, some of his research practices, and he said, sure, come on up. And I was fortunate enough to have a graduate student that was interested in working with me and Kip, and uh, Ryan Van Ruckel joined me, and we made on-farm measurements in his contest yield for three years, uh, extensively documenting his practices, uh, measuring different aspects of his crop growth and, and yield components. So what did you learn? I'm um, obviously, I mean, when you're when you're pushing the soybeans for a contest, that's one thing. But you know, how do they do it, and you know, what's translatable? Right. That, those are real good questions, and I can't answer everything. There's some things that. Kip did with his fertility program that he re he really did not share very much with me. Um, Kip uses chicken litter every year, and he puts out quite a bit of chicken litter on his farm, and that's one of his key components of his fertility program. Um, I don't know how much he uh, for how much chicken litter he put out. Uh, he also has a small pivot on his contest fields, and will run basically fertigate his crop throughout the season. And so he's providing not only the chicken litter, but also fertigation. He's feeding that crop. He's feeding that crop throughout. Um, from a soil sand standpoint, he's got an excellent condition. He's got a very well-drained silt loam soil. Uh, no problem with standing water, but it's deep soil. It uh, has nice soil structure. So the roots really don't have any inhibition for getting down in there and getting those nutrients out of the, out of the soil. Um, some, some key aspects that I think are important for Kip's high yields are he focuses a lot on planting early. Um, for us, it's, it's probably not too different from what people in Southern Ontario are doing. It's, it's basically when you're ready to plant corn, you should be ready to plant soybeans. And you know that goes against the grains of think, grain of thinking from 15 years ago, but we now recognize how important that early, early planting date is for soybean production. And that's going to give you that long photo period? That long photo period is very important because what that photo period does is it extends the flowering period. You, you ideally would like to have your variety planted in the ground uh, early and so that it will begin flowering close to the beginning of summer, around the first, the 21st or, or so of June. And at that time, you want to have your canopy completely closed so that you're intercepting all that light energy. And that's really what's going to kick off uh, the, the crop producing more flowers, producing more nodes, and setting more seeds in pods. I want to talk about variety selection. And we always know there's a difference, but you've done some of the research, and in, 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 even on Kip's farm, vast difference yes. between yields, and, and you got to get the right variety. you got to get the right variety, and, and one of the things that I learned from Kit, he has a small variety trial on his own farm to find out what works best on his, on, on his soils, and um, uh, one of the things that we learned when we started experimenting with some of the production practices that Kip used is that even though you're using the top 
varieties from all the different seed companies, when you have this high yield, highly managed fertility program, some varieties respond well to that, and some of them respond very little. Uh, they end up with have, having yields very comparable to what you would have in a normal production field. So there's a huge difference in how responsive some of these varieties are. Talk about fertility. Um, yes. You know, uh, feeding that soybean is so important. What can we take back from what Mr. Collins does? Um, there's a difference between what Mr. Cullers yeah. does and what you might want to do economically on yeah. your own farm. That's the bottom line, right? That is the bottom line. Um, I, I've, I've crunched the numbers some. Uh, we're thinking about um, for a 100 bushel yield, you need roughly 500 pounds of nitrogen per acre. The crop will take up 500 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So when you think about Randy Dowdy, uh, 191 bushels per acre this past year, He's looking at close to a thousand pounds of nitrogen per acre that that crop takes out of the ground. Um, so, you know, we, we know that nitrogen fixation is very important, but research has shown that basically nitrogen fixation can supply roughly 80 to 85 bushels per acre without any supplemental nitrogen being applied. And so if you're applying, if you're shooting for these high record yields, you apply nitrogen, but that shuts down nitrogen fixation. So and if you really are trying to do Randy Dowdy type yields, you're essentially going to be applying all of that nitrogen. What about, I just say, there's a fine line here between you know 85 and going to the next level. How do we manage that nitrogen sort of, I guess, leap? It is a leap. It, it, there, there's really, uh, I don't know of any way that you can count on that 85 bushel per acre yield that you get from nitrogen fixation and then jumping it up without shutting down the nodules. And that's really the tricky part. When you start adding supplemental nitrogen, you decrease nitrogen fixation. And there's nothing that you can do that I'm aware of to apply nitrogen fertilizer and keep those nodules active. So once you start applying nitrogen fertilizer, you've lost your nitrogen fixation. And if you want to boost your yields up, you essentially have to treat it like you would a corn crop. You have to apply all your nitrogen. Well, Larry, hey, some great insights. I want to thank you for dropping by the Soybean School, and great to have you in Canada. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank awesome. you very much.